Hi folks, it's been a while since I posted a winter trek, so good to be back. Uh, I'm scouting today a uh, route into a secret little lake trout lake that I failed to get into a couple years ago. I tried to, uh, when I parked my truck at the start of this logging road, I tried to ski in, but the snow was just too deep. And I wasn't, get a good, wasn't getting a good grip on the, the skis, so I'm wearing snowshoes. These are my bear paws here. I wish I had my, my big trail breakers, but uh, I figured I'd be bushwhacking a little later. I'm, I'm getting off this clear road here and uh, going to be cutting through an old logging road that's likely grown up with shrubs and trees, seeing if I can find that old trail. Got my uh, Steger Mucklux on to go as light as possible today, but I have a heavy day pack. On the outside there, that uh, white thing is my uh, Anorak from Empire Canvas. And uh, I got my axe and my saw on there as well as emergency gear in case I get in trouble, first aid kit and stuff. A small pot for boiling water, extra water, um, food, and a uh, little repair kit. I probably won't make it today because I got a late start and at the rate I'm going here breaking trail, I got 6k to go. I don't think I'm going to be able to do 12k round trip and uh, it gets dark here around 5.30. So, uh, We'll see how far we can get. Oh, I'm working really hard and uh, trying to vent steam. Everything's uh, uh, wool or fleece or polyester wicking layer. I got my gauntlet mitts here um, clipped to my waist, waist belt of my pack just to make sure that I stay as dry as possible. Here's my old road. I have no idea if it's going to be open as far as it needs to go before the bushwhack into the lake. I got about 4k of this. Got a moose track here. Old moose track with uh, snow in it. This area has all been cut over. Uh, I'd say 15 years ago. Jack pine and birch are now growing back. So it's not going to be a pretty forest that I'm going through and that's why this old road is here. This was a built to uh, harvest this about 15 maybe even 20 years ago. Well used snowshoe hair track here. If you're going to set a snare this would be a good spot for it. Right there. Lots of traffic on this one. Snow's quite deep. And the disadvantage to having these bear paws is that without the long tail, the tips sometimes bury. That's one of the functions of the the tail on trail breakers is it pulls the the front of the snowshoe up. It's going to be a slog. Road is starting to grow in, starting to get not nice. The birch and the alder have been pushed down by ice storms of the past and are starting to uh, clog up the trail. And the snow out of the wind here is uh, can be quite deep and my snowshoes, these are 16 by, by 30s I think and uh, I am sinking down. I don't think I'm going to get to my objective today. I get a lot of questions about why I do not use skis more. I certainly do use them and they, they can be very good on 
wind packed lakes but uh, this is thick bush extremely rugged uh, and uh, this is this is what you get in the understory now this is on a road an old road but it, all the shrubs are bent over and they're full of air pockets it makes the effect of the snow about a foot or two or like half a meter deeper than it actually is because all these shrubs and undergrowth perch up the snow and this is an example right here of hitting in just a mini air pocket and there's a shrub stem right there and my snowshoe tip just went under it behind it is another shrub that my the tail of my snowshoe just got caught in this is what happens with skis and you do a lot of face plants and pretty soon you're locked up that's an air pocket that's an air pocket I don't know if the camera with the contrast will pick up all the lumps but all those are perched up and underneath they're all like this and your skis go in and then they get caught and and because it's so airy uh, you sink down deep I'm sunk down there a, a, a good foot anyway uh, the tip of my snowshoe and uh, yeah skis are just impossible they'd have to be super super fat uh, but they'd still get caught in these loops and air pockets the skis just go right down in the air pocket and then they catch on shrubs that's why these were invented by people thousands of years ago because of the conditions that we have there's an exposed air pocket right there and this snow is it's perched up on top of all kinds of bent over shrub debris and your skis just go in there and get stuck more uh, showing the effect of the air pockets the bush the bush in some ways is more open than the roads although I'm trying to break a trail that I could haul a toboggan and the understory is just too thick it's it's too thick it'll block a toboggan it's it it's just too thick <laughs> Trail's looking bad. Now this is an old road and there's a, a deep valley there and so this is filled when they made this. Uh, you can see how rugged the bush is, although it looks open there. It's, it's really steep. It goes up, down, up, down. That's not conducive to hauling a toboggan full of gear. And it goes down into a swamp and then it's, it's, I can see a rocky face over there. So that's why we travel on lakes and old roads here. But uh, this is getting to be almost impossible. This is a small white birch sapling snapped off and leaning and this is a sign of moose brows. This is very typical of how they, uh, what they do is they grab, grab the top and reef it down and so they can get at the tips where all the nutrients are with the fresh growth and there you can see the moose brows, um, the sign of them snapping off the end of the twigs all the buds and the first year's growth is 
a lot of these is uh, snapped off. Moose just love these old roads because of all the birch that seeds in along them. I'm pulling the pin on this scout. The road isn't getting any better. That's a real steep pitch there. Uh, I'll never get uh, toboggan through all that uh, crisscrossed uh, alder and birch with all the air pockets and the, the hooped uh, branches that you can't get over and you can't get around. So, calling this scout over. I'm barely in on this trail. I figure maybe I got a kilometer uh, and it's maybe approaching an hour and a half just to do that distance. Mind you, I'm breaking trail. And uh, that's to be expected, but uh, I don't think, based on my pace, I'll get anywhere close to that lake if I was hauling a toboggan full of gear for a hot tent trip. So, that's the end of this scout. Now, what I would like to do is go into the bush out of the wind here and find a sheltered spot and make a fire and boil up some uh, water for coffee. But young cutovers are one of the worst places to be and they can be dangerous too if you have to camp because this is a clear cut civicultural technique because this is a jack pine that needs full sunlight in behind this uh, the edge of the edge of the road here has uh, birch and alder sprouting up, but inside there it's jack pine, and uh, there's nothing dead. It's all green. Um, now there might be a little bit of dead standing in there, but it's not like a fire. Um, you'd still get the thick jack pine like this after a fire, but you'd have all this standing dead uh, and and tilting over, all super dry. But everything's green and alive in there. Nothing's dead standing of any appreciable diameter so it can be uh, not a great place to be if if you want to make a fire or camp you need uh, old natural forest that's had a hundred years or more of growth preferably up from a fire and then it self thins and all that self thinning uh, creates various diameter classes of standing dead and uh, they stay standing in the in the stand over the over the decades but this is this is a clear cut, seeded and planted, and now it's come up, and uh, they're all alive, and uh, there's no, there's no, no firewood in there. 